What is platform engineering? A lot of people are talking about it nowadays. You, you hear it a lot, you see a lot of events. And today we want to talk a little bit about what it is, why you maybe should be interested in it and what you can get out of it. And to talk about this, there is Jennifer Riggins here with us, freelance journalist. Hey, Jennifer, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. How are you doing, Eric? Doing well, and thanks a lot for joining. So let's jump right in and talk about platform engineering. You just published an ebook on platform engineering, so you know a lot about the topic. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about it. The API people have talked about platforms for a long time, but it was always a rather, I would say, fuzzy idea of what a platform mm -hmm. is. And platform engineering, I think, makes that a little bit more concrete. So if you had to define platform engineering, how would you go about doing that? Okay, uh, it's a nascent topic, so there are, probably will be discussion on what if my definition is correct or not. However, platform is something that's existed since software has. There's been command and control platforms, so that's very different. Platform engineering is a developer focused tool and could be a group of tool chains, workflows, abstractions. It could start out as documentation or discovery. And then I really love Sintasso's and Abigail Bankser's description that it deals with the not unimportant, not differential work because there's this whole myth of a full stack developer, but a developer should not, the, the point of the developer is to deliver value to the end user or customer faster. That is their job. They should not need to know about how to deploy to the cloud, how to do security, how to do Kubernetes, how to do observability. These are all very important things, but that a developer that's distracting from their differential value. So the idea is that platform engineering allows an increase in developer productivity while still doing those things that of course add value and add value to the developer experience and to the quality of code so security is essential, but only 3% of developers in a Linux Foundation survey wanted to be responsible for security. 3%, that is staggering. That's about two years ago, but I doubt much has changed in that number. And these are important things, but they're not differential to their work. So anything that can help accelerate their experience, remove friction, remove frustration. And then of course it's 2023. And why did platform engineering rise this year? Probably because we're moving a bit away from that idea of incomplete developer autonomy, but rather a choice of tools, a choice of programming languages, not complete choice because it's not sustainable. It's not repeatable across the organization and trying to do more with less because most software companies sadly had layoffs in the last six months to a year, and they want to get more productivity out of their developers who have heavier workloads and heavier cognitive loads. So it's about reducing that cognitive load and streamlining their experience to delivery. So they're delivering value, but you're still providing those not unimportant or important in this case of security, but not differential work. And speaking of productivity, when we look at what organizations are getting out of platform engineering, you have this very interesting chart that I think comes originally from a puppet report that talks about how organizations are getting like just increased productivity out of or faster delivery, whatever you want to call that out of um, out of their development team. So. Is that the main thing that organizations are looking at that they are kind of fishing for when they go in that direction? I think so. I think we may talk about increasing or improving the developer experience, but we're really talking about speed to code, uh, speed to release, but in a way that's secure and can be rolled back if something is wrong. Everything is about speed to market because of the competitive world we are living in. And yeah, I believe it's 68% in that report by Puppet, which I think that's interesting into itself. They're the people that have done the state of DevOps report for years, and now they've rebranded it the state of platform engineering. That doesn't mean DevOps is dead, but it's not that hot anymore compared to platform engineering. And they do kind of work. 
Yeah, yeah, and let's not talk, you know, because I, I've done that. Let's not talk about the difference between DevOps and platform engineering. It's it doesn't matter. They both exist. They both coexist. But we just, the cloud native landscape, if you look at it, is obscene. It could not fit on even somebody working on three screens that are giant versus my little laptop screen. It couldn't fit because there are thousands of items on that now. So you can't give developers all that choice. You need to create some sort of balance where they have maybe two or three choices. It all comes back to Netflix's guardrails, not gates. So I like to refer to it as the little yellow brick road. Your platform is your golden path, your yellow brick road. You can keep going on it, but if you go off into a poppy field and fall asleep, you're now responsible for maintaining that. You're responsible for building that and finding your way back. But maybe you go off and find a new munchkin land that's very exciting, and that could become the best practice. And then that could potentially be become part of your platform engineering and your golden paths, as Spotify calls them golden paths. It's just about finding what works for your majority of your developers, which Yin Yang calls the 99% developers. You don't want this in your innovation sandbox. But platform engineering does matter because there are constantly security and quality breaches in organizations and compliance. And when we're looking into why organizations are, let's say, starting to look at platform engineering a little bit more, it's something like you said that definitely has become much more widely known, but it's still not something that everybody practices. And, and if we look into the motivations, what are the main motivations that you see that, that organizations are having when they start going in that direction? This is the year focused on developer productivity, which is coded language for increased speed of delivery. We're saying we want the individual developer to be more productive. No, we want them to be releasing quality code faster and differential code, not figuring out which cloud to go to release to or which environment. But I think, you know, what I like about this, this particular statistic or this graph is that it, at least number two is this scaling up kind of thing, which I think it's still something where in a lot of organizations I, I talk to, right, it's not so much, they're kind of fine, I think, with their speed of delivery. It's not that everybody needs to, you know, deliver new features all the time. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But they see that they have more and more APIs to work with, more and more teams that who are developing, right, and just making dealing with that scale in a way that makes sense for them. I think that sometimes also is a very important, um, important consideration, not, not just the speed, but also the scale of teams doing that. And scaling comes from reusable code. So understanding if someone's doing this already, this is a tenant of API management where you need to know what APIs we're connecting to from the start. And then if somebody already built an API for this use case, how can we reuse that code? So it's about reusability, not just building everything from scratch. Not everything should be greenfield. That's true. But the other thing I think that, you know, I find so interesting with platform engineering is to say that if I have three teams who are kind of repeating the same manual processes, it's not that much waste. But if I have a hundred teams repeating the same manual processes, right? I can, I can gain a lot of potential by just telling them now there's an automation, there's a platform doing that for you, right? So I think the, the scale also is, is just a question of how many of these things are done repeatedly where you can say, if we automate that for you, that makes you happier and faster. And but now if you- you up for scaling as a startup. Yeah. A lot of yeah. startups adopting exactly. platform first, which helps set you up for that scale. Yes. And, and yeah, but as a smaller, right, as a smaller company, typically, I think those kind of things are a little bit easier for larger organizations. Sometimes they, it, it takes more, also um, more organizational restructuring to move from the old ways of doing things to new ways of doing things. Like you need to probably need to have start platform teams and all these kind of things, but that's actually a very good segue into now, if you are, let's say, an established organization and you are getting interested in doing this kind of thing, you also have some guidance around what to do. So what is the best way, so to speak, to, to dip your toes into the platform engineering water? The first thing is to ask 
your developers what they want. What is causing them the most frustration? Uh, Paula Kennedy also from Gintasso said, look at JIRA tickets, look for repeat requests all the time. What are they repeatedly requesting of operations team? What is slowing them down? What is ma What needs manual approval? So that's the first thing. And then you have to figure out what developers want because this is adopting not a platform mindset back in the day, which is do this. We are controlling you, but a platform as a product mindset where you treat your developers as your internal customers. And then from there to get started, you want to do something. Team Topologies calls it a thinnest viable platform, not very different from a minimal viable product. And it's about going for the thing that drives the quickest value. So typically that is some sort of documentation because the one of the biggest frustrations and it also indeed slows down onboarding is how do we do this at a company? It can be like, how do we request for container? How do we do Kubernetes at our own company? How do we do security at our company? Or who owns what? Who does what at this organization? So doing some sort of discovery catalog or blueprint for an organization is a very good thing. So the best practices for platform engineering is that it's enables self-serviceability because platform engineering is focused on the developer experience, but it's really also lowering the load for the ops teams because the ops teams are constantly approving different things and having to go and it slows down velocity, which is what everyone cares about this developer productivity. So the dev and ops are still quite in friction despite the name DevOps of over the last 15 years. So the idea is that you look for what is the best way to create self-service, which is discoverability to understand what is out there, what is available, what are your choices? How do we do these best practices? Who to contact, who owns that service? These are really simple ways to get started. And then why, if you're watching this conversation and you're like, but this is about APIs, everything's about APIs. That's the most essential thing in developer experience. And the best way to give developers access to your platform and give them access to extensibility because that's what they want is via an API. So once you've built that, the minimum viable platform could be an API access to certain things or to a workflow, or it could be just as simple as documenting workflows, documenting error codes, documenting what exists and who can do it. So those are the best ways to start kick kicking off on your platform journey, which Maybe ne doesn't necessarily need a platform team yet. Maybe that's something you will do down the line, but you can provide a lot of Spotify being the one that maybe coined the term platform engineering, but certainly backstage open source is one of the most important products in the platform space and it's open source. So that's great. Um, but they have a huge culture of inner sourcing. So anyone in their organization can do a pull request, which then allows you to have more people building your platform or your documentation, which brings us full circle back to APIs because the number one complaint that developers have in the API space is they want more documentation. So same thing for platform engineering. If you want developers or open source projects, if you want people to use your project, they need to use know how to use it. So these are all essential parts of the platform engineering journey, or at least kicking it off. I think, yeah, it's all good. Before documentation, that's what I see a lot actually, is even discovery, right? In a lot of cases, it's not even that developers know there is something and it's not documented. In many cases, they don't even know it exists. Mm -hmm. right? that's so, so just being able to discover something, I think that's almost like one step below. Well, it's not- it's The documentation enables that discovery. Documentation, searchable documentation, even if it's just command F for now. And then you can use the generative AI that helps you search it and spin up workflows. There's a lot of interesting things in that space as well. But as you can see, if, if, if we discuss it like this, right, the, you can start doing things pretty easily. It doesn't need to be the perfect platform that does everything in self-service ways. It can be basically as simple as starting to think that you need to be able to discover things. You need to be able to, uh, to read 
to read up on those things with uh, through documented um, APIs, for example, and that already gives you a good start. Um, that's great. Uh, Jennifer, do you have any last words for um, our viewers who are trying to understand what platform engineering is? Read stories from other teams, but if you want to understand what platform engineering is, don't worry about that. You can read my book. Sure. That's great. It's free. So why not? Um, but the most important thing is to talk to your developers and ask what's causing them friction. That's what starts your platform journey because it may be something simple. It may not be. There will be low hanging fruit. Those Jira tickets will help uh, talk to your ops team too. <laughs> they should be talking to each other anyway more of where they're getting the most requests. But when your developers are saying, this is the thing that's causing me the most frustration, that's not just a pipeline issue. That's a recruitment issue. So you need to know and see what work on how to fix that frustration as quickly as possible. And that's how a platform, what a platform can do. And from there, as it scales, your organization can scale. But start with talking to your customers who are your internal developers. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's, it's basically saying don't, don't just build it because somebody told you, but because there are there there are issues that you think should be resolved. So better if, start discovering those issues. Yeah, if you build it, they will not come unless it's something you want to use. Well, yeah, un unless they want to, because you build it for stuff that you found out that they need and want. Okay, Jennifer, thanks so much for taking the time and talking about this. Um, I'll link to your ebook from the description. So everybody who wants to check it out, um, you should go and, and read it. And with that, we're done for today. Thanks again for being here, Jennifer. Thank you very much and have a great day, y'all. Yeah. Thanks everybody for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. And um, please keep getting APIs to work. Bye-bye. Good luck. <laughs>